Hello children. In this video lecture, I will explain you chapter 2 of the stars. Chapter 2 is The Tiger King, written by Kalki. Let's know about the author. Ramaswamy Krishnamurti, better known by his pen name Kalki, was an Indian writer, journalist, poet, critic and Indian independence activist. He was named after Kalki, the 10th and last avatara of the Hindu god Vishnu and his writings include over 120 short stories, 10 novellas, a short novel or a long short story. Uh, it means, novellas means 5 novels, 3 historical romances, editorial and political writings and hundreds of film and music reviews. Let's take a quick view about the chapter. The Tiger King is an irony on the self-love of those in power. The story is a good mix of the supernatural humor and satire. The Tiger King has been magical form his birth. His arrogance takes him on a path of destruction of the tiger population. He is too much power drunk to notice the devastation he has created. His followers are frightened of him and fall to guide him. It is an enjoyable story and one of the prime examples of Kalki's biting pen. In this story, main three characters are there. The Maharaja, known as Tiger King. He is a comical, eccentric character who behaves like an autocrat and kills Tiger indiscriminately. Second character is Divan. The Tiger King's chief minister is the comedian in the story who resorted to a falsehood to save his job. Third, the chief astrologer or we can say is a state astrologer. He had deep knowledge in astrology, was logical but a little foolish at predicting people's fate. In the story, the Question is given in the beginning of the chapter. What is the general attitude of human, human beings towards wild animals? How we need to treat them? Do we need to treat them cruelly? Or we have to be kind with them? The author asked us this question in the beginning of the chapter. What kind of behavior should have with animals now human has to think let's start an explanation of the chapter the maharaja of pratibandhapuram is the hero of this story he may be identified as his highness the medar general kiledar major satta vyagra samhari Maharaja Diraj, Vishwa, Bhuvana, Samrat, Sir Jillani, Jang Jang Bahadur, MAD, ACTC, or CRCK. But this name is often shortened to be the Tiger King. Pratiban Puram is an area in India. This story is about king of this area. The, this king had so many designations. Owing to these designations, his name had become very long. So he was in short, popularly known as the Tiger King. I have come forward to tell you why he came to be known as Tiger King. I have no intention of pretending to advance only to end in a strategic withdrawal. Even the threat of a Stuka bomber will not throw me off track. The Stuka, if it likes, can beat a hasty retreat from my story. Now, author here, after introduction of the king, tells us that uh, he will tell complete story of the tiger king and he will not stop in the between. He wanted to tell the readers to us 
the reason why the maharaja acquired the nickname of the tiger king he did not want to start the discussion and then stop before completing the story author said that even the danger of those stuka planes which were used in second world war to drop bombs would not stop him narrating the full story so he will he will narrate the story without any interruption the author is so determined that these planes will have to quickly go back so he will surely complete the story right at the start it is imperative to disclose a matter of vital importance about the tiger king everyone who reads of him will experience the natural desire to meet a man of his indomitable courage face to face but there is no chance of its fulfillment as bharata said to rama about dashratha the tiger king was reached the final abode of all living creatures in other words the tiger king is dead in the beginning it was necessary to inform something very important about the tiger king he was very brave person his determination was very strong everyone who reads about him will like to meet him in person now there was no opportunity to meet him the tiger king is now dead in ramayana bharat had informed rama about death of dashratha their father here author is informing about the death of tiger king to his readers the manner of his death is a matter of extraordinary interest it can be revealed only at the end of the tale the most fantastic aspect of his demise was that as soon as he was born astrologers had foretold that one day the tiger king would actually have to die the process of death of the tiger king is very interesting this will be disclosed towards the end of this story soon after the birth of the tiger king astrologers had made a prediction they predicted that one day the tiger king would die this was the greatest aspect about his death author had made a satire here it come also be considered a funny narration the child will grow up to become the warrior of warriors hero of heroes champion of champions but they bit their lips and swallowed hard when compelled to continue the astrologers came out with it this is a secret which should not be revealed at all and yet we are forced to speak out the child born under this star will one day have to wait its death the astrologers predicted that the child tiger king would become a great warrior a great leader and a great champion and then they suddenly stopped speaking they closed their lips and swallowed the astrologer was forced to complete the prediction they told that they were going to tell a secret which should be disclosed but he was telling the secret because he is being forced to speak astrologer told that child born at the point of time with certain position of stars in the sky would one day surely die at that very moment a great miracle took place an astonishing phrase emerged from the lips of the giant old dilani chang chang bahadur o wise prophets everyone stood transfixed in stupefaction they looked widely at each other and blinked o wise prophets it was i who spoke this time there was no grounds for doubt it was the infant born just 10 days ago who had enunciated the word so clearly the chief astrologer took off his spectacles and gazed intently at the baby 
As soon as astrologers narrated their prediction, a big miracle happened. The ten-day-old boy spoke, O oh, wise astrologers! Everybody was surprised that a ten-day-old boy was speaking. Everyone was shocked, confused and greatly surprised. They gazed at each other. They blinked their eyes. The boy told that it was he who had spoken. Now there was no reason to have a doubt. The boy who was born ten days ago had spoken these words. The chief astrologer removed his spectacles. He carefully looked at the baby. All those who are born will one day have to die. We don't need your prediction to know that. There would be some sense in it if you could tell us the manner of that death. The royal infant uttered these words in his little squeaky voice. The chief astrologer placed his finger on his nose in wonder. A baby barely ten days old opens its lips in speech. Not only that, it also raises intelligent questions incredible, rather like the bulletins issued by the war office than facts. The boy said that everybody who is born on this earth will have to die one day. They did not need any prediction to know that fact. It would be wise if the astrologer could tell mode of death. The boy from the royal family spoke these words. His voice was sharp and high-pitched. The chief astrologer was surprised. He placed his finger on his nose. He thought how a ten days old boy could speak so clearly. The boy not only spoke but asked intelligent questions. The chief astrologer could not believe this. The boy did not speak. Speak like reading news. He was speaking facts. The chief astrologer took his finger off his nose and fixed his eyes upon the little prince. The prince was born in the hour of the bull. The bull and the tiger are enemies. Therefore, de death comes from the tiger. He explained. You may think that crown prince Chang Chang Bahadur was thrown into a quack when he heard the word tiger. That was exactly what did not happen. As soon as he heard it pronounced, the crown prince gave a deep groan. Terrifying words emerged from the lips. Let tigers beware. This account is only a rumor rife in Pratibandapuram, but with hindsight, we may conclude it was based on some truth. The chief astrologer removed his finger from his nose. He looked at that little prince. He said that the boy was born in the hour of bull. The bull and the tiger are enemies of each other. So a tiger will kill him. Everybody thought that the prince would start trembling after hearing about tiger. But this did not happen. As soon as the prince listened the word tiger, he roared. This frightened everybody. He told that tiger should be afraid of him. This narration is a common rumor in Pratibandapuram. But after going through the full story, we may conclude that it was true to some extent. Children, here first part of the story ended. Now I will start explanation of the second part. Crown Prince Jang Jang Bahadur grew taller and stronger day by day. No other miracle marked his childhood days apart from the event already described. The boy drank the milk of an English cow, was brought up by an English nanny, tutored in English by an Englishman, saw nothing but English films, exactly as the crown princes of all the other Indian states did. When he came, age of 20, the state which had been with the court of wards until then came into his hands. The crown prince became taller and stronger day by day. No other surprising aspect or event happened during his childhood. 
the only surprising event of his childhood has been described above the prince drank milk of english cows his mates were english women he was taught english by an englishman he saw only english movies this was the trend for every crown prince of all other states of india this is a satire on upbringing of princes of india it tells that they had become complete slaves of englishmen and england when he became 20 years old he became the king during his childhood and till that time his state was governed by a group of people called court of wards children court of wards an arrangement to take care of state administration till the crown prince was a child that 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 was a special kind of arrangement to run a state now i read further the text but everyone in the kingdom remembered the astrologer's prediction many continued to discuss the matter slowly it came to maharaja's ears there were innumerable forest in pratibandhapuram state they had tigers in them the maharaja knew the old saying you may kill even a cow in self defense there could be certainly be no objection to killing tigers in self defense the maharaja started out on a tiger hunt everyone in his kingdom remembered the prediction of the astrologer many people used to talk about it after some time maharaja the tiger came came to know about the prediction there were many forest in the kingdom of pratibandhapuram and there were tigers in each forest the maharaja knew that to save one's life one could kill even a cow such a cow is considered a sacred animal and its killing is not allowed hence it was perfectly okay to kill tiger to save one's life so the maharaja went to tiger hunt the maharaja was thrilled beyond measure when he killed his first tiger he sent for the state astrologer and showed him the dead beast what do you say now he demanded your majesty may kill 99 tigers in exactly the same manner but the astrologer drawled but what speak up without fear but you must be very careful with the 100th tiger what if the 100th tiger was were also killed then i will tear up all my books on astrology set fire all to them and and i shall cut off my tuft crop my hair short and become an insurance agent the astrologer finished on an incoherent note when the maharaja killed his first tiger he was very happy he called the chief astrologer and showed him the dead body body of the animal the maharaja asked him what was his opinion now the astrologer said that maharaja may kill 99 tigers after saying this the astrologer stopped and said something very unclear the maharaja asked him to speak without any fear the astrologer said that he should be very careful while killing the 100th tiger he wanted to say that maharaja would be killed by the 100th tiger the maharaja asked the astrologer what will happen if he killed the 100th tiger also the astrologer said that in that case he would tear and burn all his books of astrology he means to say that he was very sure of his prediction the astrologer said that he would cut his tuft choti he will leave the profession of astrology and become an insurance agent he said all this in a confused and unconnected manner children 
this was the second part. Now I will start explanation of the third part of the story. From that day onwards, it was celebration time for all the tigers inhabiting Pratibandhapuram. The state banned tiger hunting by anyone except the Maharaja. A proclamation was issued to the effect that if anyone dared to flinch so much as a stone as a tiger, all his wealth and property would be confiscated. The Maharaja vowed he would attend to all other matters only after killing the hundred tigers. Initially, the king seemed well set to realize his ambition. Not that he faced no dangers. There were times when the bullet missed its mark. The tiger leapt upon him and he fought the beast with his bare hands. Each time, it was the Maharaja who won. From that day, the tigers living in Pratibandapuram were happy. Hunting a tiger was prohibited in the state. Only the Maharaja could do hunting of tigers. An order was issued that if anybody threw even a stone at a tiger, his property will be taken away from him. The king promised to himself that first he would kill hundred tigers. Only after that he would took rest or look at other aspects of administration. In the beginning, the king was easily moving towards achieving his ambition. The king faced many dangers during tiger hunt. Sometimes the bullet did not hit the target. The tiger jumped upon the king. He had to fight the tiger without any weapon. Every time, Maharaja killed the tiger. At another time, he was in danger of losing his throne. A high-ranking British officer visited Pratibandhapuram. He was very fond of hunting tigers and fonder of being photographed with the tigers he had shot. As usual, the, he wished to hunt tigers in Pratibandhapuram. But the Maharaja was firm in his resolve. He refused permission. I can organize any other hunt. You may go on a boar hunt. You may conduct a mouse hunt. We are ready for a mosquito hunt. A tiger hunt? That's impossible. Once the king had the danger of losing his kingdom, a senior British officer came to the Pratibandapuram. He liked tiger hunting. He liked to have his photograph with dead body of tiger killed by him. The British officer wanted to do tiger hunting in Pratibandapuram. But the king did not give him permission. He was determined about his decision. The decision of not allowing anybody else to hunt tigers. The king told that he would give permission to hunt any other animal. The officer would be allowed to hunt a wild pig or a mouse. He could hunt even a mosquito, but he would not be allowed to hunt a tiger. Hunting of a mouse and, and a mosquito is mentioned here as a humor. The British officer's secretary sent word to the Maharaja through the Divan and the Durai himself did not have to kill the tiger. The Maharaja could do the actual killing. What was important to the Durai was a photograph of himself holding the gun and standing over the tiger's carcass. But the Maharaja would not agree even to this proposal. If he relented now, what would he do if other British officers turned up for the tiger hunts. Children here Durai means chief or third leader and here Durai means the high ranking British officer. Now in the story the secretary of the British officer sent a message to the king. This message was sent through the minister Divan of the king. He said that 
the officer did not want to kill the tiger maharaja could hunt the tiger in the message it was returned that the officer wanted his photograph with the dead body of the tiger in the photograph officer would hold the gun and he would put his one leg on the dead body of the tiger but the king did not agree even to this the king thought if he agreed this time in future he would have to agree to all other british officers for tiger hunt because he prevented a british officer from fulfilling his desire the maharaja stood in danger of losing his kingdom itself the maharaja and the diwan held deliberations over this issue as a result a telegram was dispatched for with to a famous british company of jewelers in calcutta sent samples of expensive diamond rings of different designs the king did not fulfill desire of a british officer so there was a danger that he may lose his kingdom meaning that british would remove the king from the throne the king and his diwan had a discussion about this matter after the discussion a telegram was immediately sent to a british firm in calcutta this firm was making jewelry the telegram asked the firm to send samples of expensive diamond rings some 50 rings arrived the maharaja sent the whole lot of british officers good lady the king and the minister expected that durai sani to choose one or two rings and send the rest back within no time at all the durai sani sent her reply thank you very much for your gifts in two days a bill for 3 lakh of rupees came from the british jewelers the maharaja was happy that though he had lost 3 lakh of rupees he had managed to retain his kingdom children here durai sani means wife of durai now about 50 rings were received from the firm the king sent all the rings to wife of the officer the king and his minister expected that he would uh, she would select one or two rings she will return the remaining rings immediately she sent a reply thanking the king for gifts meaning she had kept all the rings after two days the jewelry firm sent a bill for rupees 3 lakh the king had to pay the amount but the king was happy that he had not lost his kingdom children here is the end of the third part of the story now we'll start explanation of the fourth part the maharaja's tiger hunts continued to be highly successful within 10 years he was able to kill 70 tigers and then an unforeseen hurdle brought his mission to a standstill the tiger population became extinct in the forest of pratibandhapuram who knows whether the tigers practiced birth control or committed hierarchy or simply ran away from the state because they desired to be shot by british hands alone the tiger king was very successful in his tiger hunts in 10 years he had killed 70 tigers after that an unexpected difficulty stopped his assignment of tiger hunts population of tiger in the forest of pratibandhapuram became zero in a satire author makes guesses for the reason nobody knew if tigers adopted birth control methods or they committed suicide or they ran away from forest because they wanted to get killed by british these are humorous reasons also one day the maharaja sent for the diwan diwan sahib aren't you aware of the fact that 30 tigers still remain to be shot down by this gun of mine he asked brandishing 
his gun. Shuddering at the sight of the gun, the Divan cried out, Your Majesty, I am not a tiger. Which idiot would you would call you a tiger? No, and I am not a gun. You are neither tiger nor gun. Divan Sahib, I summoned you here for a different purpose. I have decided to get married. One day, the king called his minister. He said, Divan, that thirty more tigers were yet to be killed by him. While saying these words, he raised his gun towards Divan. Looking at the gun, the Divan started trembling. He told the king that he was not a tiger. King replied that only a fool will say that he was a tiger. The Divan said that he was not a gun. Actually, Divan is terrified. The king said to Divan that he was neither a tiger nor a gun. The king told Divan that he had called him for another reason. The king had decided to get married. The Divan began to babble even more. Your Majesty, I have two wives already. If I marry you, don't talk nonsense. Why should I marry you? What? I want is a tiger. Your Majesty, please think it over. Your ancestors were married to this ward. If you like, marry the gun. A tiger king is more than enough for the state. It doesn't need a tiger queen as well. The Divine again started talking silly things. He said that he had two wives and could not marry the king. The king scolded Divan and asked him not to talk nonsense. The king told Divan that he wanted a tiger. The Divan requested the king to think about it once again. He told the king that his ancestors had married a sword. If the king liked, he could marry a gun. A tiger king is sufficient for the kingdom. The kingdom does not want a tiger queen. The Maharaja gave a loud crack of laughter. I am not a thinking of marrying either a tiger or a girl, but a girl from the ranks of human beings. First, you may draw up statistics of tiger population in different native states. Next, you may investigate if there is a girl I can marry in the royal family of a state with a large tiger population. The ti king laughed loudly. He told Divan that he did not want to marry a tiger or a gun. He wanted to marry a girl from another kingdom and the girl should be a human being. The king advised Divan to make list of kingdoms of India, then write number of tigers in his state, then find out if he can marry a girl of royal family of the state that has large number of tigers. The Divan followed his orders. He found the right girl from a state which possessed a large number of tigers. Maharaja Jang Jang Bahadur killed five or six tigers each time he visited his father-in-law. In this manner, 99 tiger skins adorned the walls of the reception hall in the Pratibandapuram palace. Divan obeyed orders of the king. He found a girl from royal family of a state that had a large population of tigers. The king married that girl. The king used to uh, go to meet his father-in-law. During every visit, he killed five or six tigers. In this method, he killed 99 tigers. Skins of all 99 tigers were decorated on walls of the reception hall of his palace. Children, now I will start explanation of fifth part. The Maharaja's anxiety reached a fever pitch when there remained just one tiger to achieve his tally of a hundred. He had this one thought during the day and the same dream at night. By this time, the tiger farms had run dry even in his father-in-law's kingdom. 
it became impossible to locate tigers anywhere. Yet only one more was needed. If it could kill just that one single beast, the Maharaja would have no fears left. He could give up tiger hunting altogether. When the king had killed 99 tigers, he became very anxious. Now he was only one tiger away from reaching 100. His anxiety was very high. During the day, he thought only about 100th tiger. During the night, he only dreamed of only 100th tiger. Now all the forest in kingdom of his father-in-law were also without any tiger. It was impossible to find or see a tiger. But only one more tiger was required. If the king killed 100th tiger, he would be without any danger of losing his life. Then he could leave tiger hunting. But he had to be extremely careful with that last tiger. What had the last chief astrologer said? Even after killing 99 tigers, the Maharaja should be aware of the 100th. True enough. The tiger was a savage beast after all. One had to be wary of it. But where was the hundred tiger to be found? It seemed easier to find tiger's milk than a live tiger. Thus the Maharaja was sunk in gloom. But soon came the happy news which dispelled that gloom. In his own state, ship began to disappear frequently from a hillside village. The king had to be very careful with the hundred tiger. He remembered the prediction of the chief astrologer. He had said that the king should be very cautious of the hundred tiger. After all, the tiger is a dangerous animal. One needs to be careful. But it had become difficult to find the hundred tiger. It appeared that it was easier to find milk of tiger, but finding tiger was difficult. This is again a satire and humor. The king had become very sad, but a happy news came, which removed the sadness. In his kingdom, ship were disappearing from a village, and this village was situated near a hill. It was first ascertained that this was not the work of Khader Mia Sahib or Vira Sami Nyaikar, both famed for their ability to swallow sheep whole. Surely a tiger was at work. The villagers ran to inform the Maharaja. The Maharaja announced a three year exemption from all taxes for that village and set out on the hunt at once. First, villagers confirmed that Khadar Mia Sahib and Virasami Naikar were not eating the sheep. Both these persons were famous for their capacity to eat one full sheep. Now it was concluded that a tiger was taking away sheep. The tigers went to inform uh, the villagers went to inform Maharaja and inform him that presence of a tiger near their village. The king was very happy. He announced that villagers need not to pay tax for three years. He immediately started for hunt. The tiger was not easily found. It seemed as if it had want only hid itself in order to float the Maharaja's will. The Maharaja was equally determined. He refused to leave the forest until the tiger was found. As the days passed, the Maharaja's fury and obstinacy mounted alarmingly. Many officers lost their jobs. It was difficult to find that tiger. It seemed that the tiger was intentionally hiding to disobey the desire of king. 
The king was also determined to find the tiger. He did not want to leave the forest before killing the tiger. Many days passed. Now the king got angry. He became more determined because of his anger. Many people lost their jobs. One day, when his rage was at its height, the Maharaja called the Divan and ordered him to double the land tax forthwith. The people will become discontented, and then our state too will fall a prey to the Indian National Congress. In that case, you may resign from the post," said the king. One day, the king was very angry. He called his Divan. He ordered immediately double the tax on the villagers. The Divan told King that the villagers will become dissatisfied. They will become member of Indian National Congress. The King said, "If that happens, the Divan will need to resign from the post." The Divan went home, convinced that if the Maharaja did not find the tiger soon, the results could be catastrophic. He felt. life returning to him only when he saw the tiger which had been brought from the people's park in madras and kept hidden in his house the divan went to his home he understood tiger for the king needs to be found very soon otherwise it would have dangerous results actually divan was very afraid at his home divan was hiding a tiger This tiger was brought from People's Park of Madras. When Devan saw this tiger, he felt as if his life had come back to him. At midnight, when the town slept in peace, the Devan and his aged wife. dragged the tiger to the car and showed it into the seat the divan himself drove the car straight to the forest where the maharaja was hunting when they reached the forest the tiger launched its satyagraha and refused to get out of the car the divan was thoroughly exhausted in his efforts to haul the beast out of the car and push it down to the ground At midnight when all people in the town were sleeping the divan and his old wife pulled the tiger up to their car then only pushed the tiger on the back seat of the car divan himself drove the car to the forest where the king had camped for hunting divan is sacrificing his own tiger to save his job he does not have any affection towards the king In the forest Divan tried to push the tiger out of the car but the tiger was not ready to come out Divan kept on trying to pull out the tiger Divan was completely tired somehow he pushed the tiger out of the car On the following day the same old tiger wandered into the maharaja's presence and stood as if in humble supplication master that what do you command of me it was with boundless joy that the maharaja took careful aim at the beast the tiger fell in a crumbled heap i have killed the 100 tiger my bow has been fulfilled the maharaja was overcome with elation ordering the tiger to be brought to the capital in grand procession the maharaja hastened away in his car next day same old tiger moved towards the king so that he could see it it stood in front of the king as if to make a polite request sir what are your orders for me the sight of tiger was an unlimited joy for the king he aimed his gun at the animal and fired a bullet the tiger fell down in the form of a folded stick the king was extremely happy 
He shouted that he had killed the hundred tiger. His pledge was completed. He ordered that body of the tiger should be brought to his palace in a big procession. He hurriedly went to his palace in his car. After the Maharaja left, the hunters went to take a closer look at the tiger. The tiger looked back at them, rolling its eyes in bafflement. The man realized that the tiger was not dead. The bullet had missed it. It had fainted from the shock of the bullet whizzing past. The hunters wondered what they should do. They decided that the Maharaja must not come to know that he had missed his target. If he did, they could lose their jobs. One of the hunters took aim from a distance of one foot and shot the tiger. This time, he killed it without missing his mark. The hunters who were the helpers accompanying the king went near the tiger after Maharaja had gone. They looked at the tiger. The tiger also looked at them. The tiger looked a bit confused. It was rolling its eyes. The man understood that the tiger had not died. The bullet, the bullet had missed its aim. The tiger had become unconscious due to sound of bullet. The hunters thought what they should do now. The hunters decided that they will not tell the king about it. They were afraid that they might lose their job. So one of them fired a bullet at the tiger. This time, the hunter did not miss the target. The bullet hit the tiger. The tiger died. So the hundredth tiger was not killed by the king. And the king did not know this. Then as commanded by the king, the dead tiger was taken in procession through the town and buried. A tomb was erected over it. According to orders of the king, the tiger was taken to the town in a procession. After that, it was buried and a tomb was made over the place of its burial. A few days later, the Maharaja's son's third birthday was celebrated. Until then, the Maharaja had given his entire mind over to tiger hunting. He had had no time to spare for the crown prince. But now the king turned his attention to the child. He wished to give him some special gift on his birthday. He went to the shopping center in Pratibandapuram and searched every shop, but could not find anything suitable. Finally, he spotted a wooden tiger in a toy shop and decided it was the perfect gift. After some days, it was third birthday of son of the king. Earlier, the king was fully occupied with tiger hunting. He could not give any time to his son, the crown prince. But now the king wanted to take care of his son. He wanted to give a special gift to his son on his birthday. He wanted to buy a gift for his son. He went to various shops of the town. He searched many shops but did not find a suitable gift. In one shop, he saw a wooden tiger. He decided to give this toy to his son. The wooden tiger cost only two annas and a quarter. But the shopkeeper knew that if he quoted such a low price to the Maharaja, he would be punished under the rules of the emergency. So he said, Your Majesty, this is an extremely rare example of craftsmanship. A bargain at 300 rupees. In olden times, one rupee had 16 parts and each part was called an ana. So a quarter rupee was equal to four annas, two annas 
and a quarter means six annas. Cost of the wooden tiger was uh, six annas, but the shopkeeper did not have the courage to tell such a low price for the toy. He feared that he might be punished by the king for selling such a cheap toy. This is again a satire on rich people. They want to buy only costly items. The, so, the shopkeeper told the king that it was a special toy. It is an example of a beautifully made toy. It is difficult to find such a good toy. The toy is a very good piece of art. So, he told that its price was 300 rupees. Very good. Let this be your offering to the crown prince on his birthday, said the king and took it away with him. On that day, father and son played with that tiny little wooden tiger. It had been carved by an unskilled carpenter. Its surface was rough. Tiny silvers of wood stood up like quills all over it. One of those slivers pierced the Maharaja's right hand. He pulled it out with his left hand and continued to play with the prince. The king told that it will be a gift to the crown prince from shopkeeper. He took the toy with him, meaning that the king did not pay anything to the shopkeeper. This is again satire on how kings behaved with common people in their kingdom. On the birthday of crown prince, the father and son played with that very small toy. The toy was made by unskilled carpenter. Surface of the toy was rough. It had small sharp pieces on its surface. These were like thorns or bristles. Once silver face went into the right hand of the king. He removed it with his left hand and he continued to play with his son. The next day, infection flared in the Maharaja's right hand. In four days, it developed into a suppurating sore which spread all over the arm. Three famous surgeons were brought in from Madras. After holding a consultation, they decided to operate. The operation took place. The three surgeons who performed it came out of the theatre and announced the operation was successful. The Maharaja is dead. In this manner, the hundred tiger took its final revenge upon the tiger king. The next day, the infection in right hand of the king increased. In four days, pus started coming out of the wound and the infection spread to his full arm. To treat his wound, three famous surgeons were called from Madras. They discussed among themselves and decided to operate the wound. The operation was done. After operation, three surgeons came out of the operation theatre. They announced that the operation was successful but Maharaja was dead. This is a satire on surgeons. How can an operation be called successful if the patient is dead? So, In this way children, the hundred tiger took its revenge. From the Tiger King, the prediction of astrologer came correct. So children, here for your reference, I have given textual question answer of the chapter. Write and learn well for your all upcoming exams in the chapter of vistas refer meaning only for your better understanding do not write any meaning in your notebook write only question answer thank you